Hello, I'm Catherine and I'm an Information Officer with the Dyslexia Association of Ireland. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the, the transition to secondary school for dyslexic students. The topics I'll be covering include approaching the transition, choosing a school, choosing subjects, what to expect from the school, how to communicate needs, dyslexia-friendly environments, exam accommodations, the disability access route to education, Irish exemptions and language exemptions at third level, as well as tips for getting organised and for preparing for state exams. Starting secondary school can be an anxious time for any young person, not just for those with dyslexia. There are a lot of changes. A new peer group, a bunch of new teachers, not just the one or two they had in primary school, lots of new subjects, a big building to navigate, and a lot of very tall seeming sixth years to get out of the way of. It's perfectly normal for a child to take time to adjust and to settle into their new school. What is particularly helpful to children during this transition is knowing that they have someone they can speak to about any challenges they come up against and someone who will help them navigate the situation, and who can support them in solving problems as they arise. Secondary school and adolescence is a time when young people are learning to move around the world themselves, and to advocate for themselves. If your child is dyslexic, there will be instances during school, and in further education, and in the workplace, where they are going to encounter a difficulty that needs to be overcome. And this may be a time, now, to help them build the problem-solving and self-advocacy skills that will serve them throughout life. Again, these are skills that benefit every person, but I think that because of the focus on reading and writing in secondary school, a, dys a dyslexic child's self-esteem is liable to take a bit of a battering. It's important then to avoid feelings of helplessness and to instead reinforce the belief that the world is changeable or is moldable and that soft skills can be acquired that can help you move around the world with greater ability and more success. In as many words, you should encourage your child to adopt a growth mindset. Young people should also be encouraged to build on their strengths, whether it be in drama, technology, sports, maths, music, or in helping others. Building skills in other areas can help establish confidence and act as a reminder that there is more to life than school and that there is more, th 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 and that there is more to a person than the results they get in school. That's not to say that a dyslexic young person cannot go on to get strong results in their exams and to do well in education. A quick reminder, because it's never any harm to remind people of this, Dyslexia is not about being lazy, it is not about not trying hard enough. It needs to be recognised that dyslexic individuals often work much harder and longer than their peers. And of course, it is never ever about being stupid. I think young people need to understand that stupid is a word that people who are impatient and judgmental use, um, and they use it when they are looking to blame others for the fact that they themselves haven't learned to control their temper. I think young people also need to know that the cruel words of others rarely contain any truth and to never use those words to describe themselves and, of course, anyone else. Alongside this, it's important for young people to understand that dyslexia doesn't make someone any less intelligent, talented, creative or capable. It is nothing to be ashamed of or embarrassed by, and it is important to challenge stereotypes and other people's lazy thinking when you encounter it. Alongside this, it's important for parents to realise that their attitude towards dyslexia will be something that really influences how their child feels about their dyslexia. In this way, it's important to be reflective and self-aware about any attitudes or anxieties that you yourself have about dyslexia and the challenges it brings. Depending on where you're living, you may have a degree of choice in which secondary school your child attends. There's a few different things to take into consideration and to research, and we recommend making contact with potential schools to learn more about how they do things. Open nights also offer an opportunity to speak to teachers and staff. Subject choice is one of the most important factors to consider in choosing a school. Does the school offer a wide range of subjects? And most importantly, will students that have language exemptions have the option of picking up another subject? You also need to know, does the school offer any special help for children with dyslexia? Are, they, are there supports offered? What's the school's approach to the use of technology? Are they happy to allow a child to use a tablet or a laptop in the classroom? Are they aware of different types of assistive technology and their potential applications? How aware is the school as well of the processes and criteria for applying for reasonable accommodations in state exams or to the disability access route to higher education? Also, it is important to consider other factors beyond the academic side. For example, if one school seems like it would be a good fit academically for a child, would involve separating them from their friends or a lengthy journey, then the possible impact of this should inform your decision as well. There is also available a booklet which focuses on dyslexic students attending Gaelskulna, 
which can be found on our website, dyslexia.ee, and the Gale Educus website, gaeleducus.ie. We are frequently asked what the best subjects are for a dyslexic student to study. There is no straightforward answer to this, because simply put, dyslexics are not one and the same. People have different interests, people have different strengths, people have different difficulties. We would say that's very important that enjoyment is taken into account when choosing subjects. The points and examination system can maybe make education seem like a joyless pursuit and to counter that it's important to try and bring pleasure back into the equation. Education shouldn't be painful and motivation and interest cannot be underestimated as a contributing factor to your achievement. With that said, if a young person is choosing to study a second language, Spanish, Spanish is considered to be phonically transparent. This means that it can be easier for people with dyslexia to learn. However, if your child is keenly interested in French, it shouldn't be disregarded just because it's not the most dyslexia friendly. There is no automatic entitlement to learning supports because of a diagnosis of dyslexia, and we would recommend setting up meetings with the principal and relevant staff to discuss the implementation of the recommendations made in the educational psychologist report. Learning supports are given on a needs-based basis, and schools have a degree of autonomy over how they use their available resources. For these reasons, it's important that you communicate well with the school so that the appropriate supports are provided and necessary adjustments are made. Of course, you can call or email us at the Dyslexia Association if you're in need of some guidance with regards to accessing supports. In primary school, your child had their class teacher, there was the principal, and perhaps they have been in learning support with another teacher too. So relatively speaking, for the parent or guardian of a primary school child, there are only a handful of people you might be in contact with in regards to your child's dyslexia and learning. You can build up stronger relationships and because the child is of primary school age, you can maybe take a more forthright attitude about things in a way. In secondary school, in contrast, they could have 10, 11, 12 class teachers. You're not going to have the same depth of relationship with these teachers and your strategy for approaching communication with the school and its staff should reflect that. As much as possible, you should aim to have a constructive relationship with the school and its staff. It's important that all teachers know that your child has dyslexia. Communication can be a problem, sometimes a major problem in some schools. It is essentially up to yourself how you navigate this. You could compile a profile of needs which can be issued to teachers. Um, this would include the student's details, that they have a diagnosis of dyslexia and can describe the impact and challenges of the learning difficulty. It would also outline the needs of the child and make requests for accommodations. You may wish to send this in before term starts or to bring copies to parent-teacher meetings. It may be worth asking the principal or year head what they think the best approach may be. There are some easy adjustments that can be made in the classroom that don't cost a thing and that don't impact negatively on the learning of others. In fact, dyslexia-friendly environments tend to be friendly to all learners. Allowing for different methods of engagement and ways of presenting information can be one way of doing this. For example, using videos or podcasts as a way to learn about a topic. Some teachers might also be open to allowing students to present their work in different ways. Although, although this can seem counterintuitive or maybe not productive because of the focus on reproducing information in examinations, alternative ways of demonstrating learning and thought does allow students to engage at work and produce their own thoughts and ideas in a way that they are comfortable with and can help them build their curiosity, their self-esteem, as well as, of course, their knowledge and understanding. Alongside these approaches, simple things like not putting students under pressure to read aloud in class, or not being too harsh with spelling corrections, or allowing extra time to copy down from the board, or even allowing the young person to take a photo of the board with either notes or homework on it. These can relieve some of the some of the stress and pressure your child might experience in the classroom. Not all students with dyslexia will be granted accommodations in state exams. There is also no guarantee that any accommodations granted in a school's in-house exams will also be granted in state exams. All criteria and processes for applying for accommodations are subject to change and you can check for the most up-to-date documents on examinations.ie. They will be listed under the Reasonable Accommodations at Certificate Examinations Guidelines. There are two instruction files available on the examinations website explaining the Reasonable Accommodation Scheme, one for schools and one for students. It's no harm to have a look at both documents. In particular, Section 9 of the Instructions for Schools outlines the eligibility criteria for specific accommodations. 
Eligibility for accommodations is based on scores attained in literacy related standardised tests and the meeting um, of set criteria rather than the presence of a diagnosis of learning difficulty. It is worth keeping in mind in the case that a spelling and grammar waiver is not granted that spelling and grammar is worth 10% of the overall mark in language subjects only and that you would have to spell almost everything wrong to lose the full 10%. The supports provided at Junior Psycho will be provided again at Leaving Cert, subject to confirmation by the school authority of an identified and continuing need. The State Examinations Commission will accept the school authority's judgment and other than in exceptional circumstances does not not expect the schools to seek additional uh, evidence or undertake further testing. The school will need to submit the RA1 form, however, to reactivate these accommodations. Applications are made for accommodations by the school and this past year the closing dates for accommodations were mid-October for the Leaving Cert and mid-December for the Junior Cert and late applications could be met up to April. These deadlines change of course from year to year and it is always recommended that you check the examinations.ie website for the most up-to-date information. The following accommodations may be available to a dyslexic student depending on their eligibility. An individual reader to read the examination papers a reading assistant to read occasional words or phrases of examination papers. In both these cases, the reader or assistant cannot explain what words, phrases or questions mean. They can only read what is on the paper. An exam reading pen to scan text and convert it to speech, which can be listened to using earphones. A word word processor or a recording device to record the candidate's responses or, in very exceptional circumstances, access to a scribe. A waiver from the assessment of spelling, grammar and punctuation in language subjects. The use of a word processor for coursework in a select number of subjects is also available. However, additional time is not something that can be sanctioned through the reasonable accommodation scheme. Further to this, access to individual special examination centres will be granted to those who are recording answers using either a recording device or a scribe and those who need an individual reader as opposed to reading assistants. Shared special examination centres are to be used by those who are using a word processor, reading pen or other aids, or who are availing of reading assistants. It's also worth considering that the student gets some practice of exam papers using the accommodations that they will be receiving. Writing an essay using a recording device is quite a different experience to writing an essay down on paper. Where students receive accommodations, this will be noted on their exam certificates. Although we don't support this practice, we can we also recommend that you don't worry too much about it. Employers rarely ask to see Leaving Cert results and once you get to third level, qualifications are not annotated in this way. You can appeal a decision about exam accommodations if you're not happy. The timescales, deadlines and instructions for doing this will be explained in the letter you receive rejecting the accommodation. Always ask to see, first of all, the letter which states why accommodations have been refused and why, and second, the original application that was submitted. DARE is an alternative entry route to third level for students with disabilities. It recognises the impact of the disability on points received. Further information, including current criteria, the application procedure and deadlines can be found on accesscollege.ie. It's important to remember that you do not automatically qualify for DARE if you have dyslexia and that DARE is by no means a guarantee your child will get on the course they want. It is also important to note that your child can still access supports in college even if they do not apply through DARE. As of August 2019, the Department of Education and Skills has updated its criteria on exemption from the study of Irish. In line with other department policies, there has been a movement away from requiring a specific diagnosis and instead the new criteria are based on the identified needs of a student. Children may be exempted from studying Irish in primary school if their word reading, reading comprehension or spelling in English are at or below the 10 percentile and if they are presented with significant learning difficulties that are persistent despite having had access to a differentiated approach to language and literacy learning in both Irish and English. A pupil is not allowed to be exempt from the study of Irish simply because they are dyslexic or because they find the subject difficult. The application procedure is similar for both primary and secondary schools. 
To secure an exemption, parents or guardians must make a written request to the school principal for a certificate of exemption from the study of Irish on behalf of the, stu- of the pupil. The principal must inform the parents or guardians that the application will be processed and the outcome confirmed in writing within 21 school days of receipt of the application. Typically, a standardised test will be administered by the school to discern the student's current abilities across the three skills, that is, word reading, reading comprehension and spelling. A psychological report or a diagnosis of dyslexia is no longer required by the department. There is an option not to exercise the exemption granted without any loss of the right to exercise it at a future time. Further information is available on education.ae and the relevant circulars are for primary schools 0052-2019 and for post-primary 0053-2019. These circulars also contain information on the appeals process. You can find copies of the circulars on our website in the information section or by web searching the names of the circulars. Different third level institutions have different language exemption policies. Students with dyslexia can apply directly to third level institutions for an exemption from the matriculation language requirements. A formal Irish exemption is not necessarily required for this, however the criteria outlined by the college must be satisfied. The National University of Ireland includes NUIG, UCD, UCC, Maynooth, RCSI, NCAD, Mary Immaculate and St Pat's amongst others. All these colleges share the same criteria um, and Trinity and UL have their own guidelines. All relevant guidelines and processes are available on the NUI, Trinity and UL websites and it is worthwhile having a look at them when you get the opportunity to, keeping in mind that they may change between now and your child reaching college age. It is also important to consider that some college courses have a language module as a core requirement, so be sure to do your research carefully and also to research the different available options. If a young person with an Irish exemption wants to become a primary school teacher, for example, they may want to consider studying in the UK or taking a recognised Irish language conversion course. I'm now going to cover some suggestions and advice on organisation and studying. I think it's important to realise that organisation isn't just an extra or a bonus, it's intrinsic to doing well. Being organised makes starting a task a lot easier. You want to reduce the barrier to getting started as much as possible. You need to start studying, but you have to look for your calculator and the right notebook and you don't know where your ruler is. You're adding 15, 20 minutes onto your work and you've gotten yourself frustrated and you've used up valuable energy. Do yourself a favour and get yourself organised. It's also genuinely a good habit to build for adult life. Colour coding books and copies and folders and timetables can be very helpful. This doesn't have to be very obvious. A red dot on your maths copy, one on your maths book, one beside maths on your timetable. It makes it a lot easier to see what you need for class or for homework. Similarly, placing everything in the same large zip folder or envelope folder can make it a lot easier to grab what you need and and to go. Even something like sticking a copy of your timetable on or over your desk can make planning your day and packing your bag that bit easier. Use materials that you enjoy using. Um, consider what type of paper you like to work on what sort of pens and highlighters are your favorite try out different ways of writing notes trial and error is key here as it is to most things in life and similarly using tools that you like to use can make a task a lot less daunting and that bit more enjoyable or bearable at least as much as possible try to ensure that you have sufficient study space ideally a place that is dedicated to study only Of course, you might be restricted in terms of how much space is available. Maybe even consider a foldable table or consider how shared spaces can be best used so that you can establish a regular homework and study routine. It can be helpful to separate studying into understanding and into remembering. There are separate activities and it can help to think about it in that way so that studying feels less overwhelming. First, you need to understand the material, which can be done using different sorts of media, visuals, videos, podcasts, whatever you can find. You then need to test your understanding. You can do this by explaining it to someone else or even just out loud to yourself. It can also be done by answering the questions at the end of a section or a chapter in a book. Those questions are there to help you learn and sometimes you just need to check an answer verbally to see if you know it. You don't necessarily need to write it down. It may also be helpful to check your answers verbally as a run through and after having success with that, consolidate the knowledge by writing down your answers to the same questions without referencing the text. 
once you understand the material that you will need to reproduce in an exam, then what you need to do is create a way of remembering that material. The best way to memorise things is to have a broad range of techniques that you can use and to mix and match these based on the subject and the way you learn best. You can record essays onto your phone or onto a dictaphone and listen back to the recordings when you're on the bus or walking to school. This can be good for history or English. Drilling definitions can be quite tedious but also can work. If something isn't sinking in though, don't be afraid to make up a mnemonic. Mnemonics can be helpful for learning lists of information, for learning the spellings of difficult but commonly used words, or even for remembering the keywords of a definition. When I was in school, I used to use funny acronyms. I would use mnemonics, I would make up rhymes, I'd sing things to a tune, or imagine funny images or visual visuals. I generally found if I thought something was amusing, I would remember it. I wouldn't go as far as to say studying can be fun, but I would say you can at least try to keep yourself entertained. The SQ3 OR method, which is essentially a method of active reading and then recall, would probably fit third level students a bit better than it would second level students, but it is worth looking at. I won't go into the nuts and bolts of it, but a description of the process can be found on our website. Once you're looking at the leaving search, marking schemes show you how much you need to know. Keep in mind that the exams are marked to maintain an average. This means that one year a slightly less perfect answer might get a student full marks, but another year it may not. In this case, you need to learn what the fullest answer is and learn that. Past exam papers are vital. You can also use these to check knowledge verbally. This means revision doesn't have to involve the monotony of writing down answer after answer always, but can just be something that is done in a more dynamic or multi-sensory way. In essence, you are trying to create question banks for yourself. You want to have asked yourself every question you can have asked yourself on the material. You don't want to go into an exam and see a question you've never seen before. You want to have already seen that question while you were sitting at home or at school with your textbook. If you're doing a subject which has an older syllabus, then you will have a lot of material available to you and you should exploit that. You can also get copies of the syllabuses of each subject online at curriculumonline.ie. These can be helpful in particular for science subjects as they give you a full overview of everything on the course. It can be quite satisfying and motivating to see the progress you are making as well as you take each topic off as you revise it. There are of course different revision books available. Some are better than others. Often a teacher might be able to recommend one. It might be that one publisher has the better book for one subject and another has it for a different one. You can order these as well into your local library and they can be particularly helpful in supplementing your textbook while you're making up your own notes or when writing the essays that you will use for revision. Of course, the Dyslexia Association is always available to help and to provide information. At the moment, our information line is available on a temporary number, which is 086 056 2349 or via email at info at dyslexia.ie. We run workshops in a number of locations around the country for both primary and secondary students. We also maintain a private tutors list, which is available to members and includes tutors who are currently able to provide tutoring remotely. Alongside this, we provide assessments for both adults and young people. More information on all of these services is available on our website, dyslexia.ie.